now at 11 cleanup and a trail of damage following destructive weekend protests in Portland. Plus, both local Republicans and Democrats blast what they call a sign of disrespect and a frustrating part of election season. Also, the latest on the pandemic in Oregon. What's the process like if you test positive for COVID-19? We talked to a recently recovered man about his time in quarantine. This is KGW News at 11. They are not engaged in any activity that has any relationship whatsoever to racial justice or equity. They are purely engaged in violence and criminal destruction for the sake of violence and criminal destruction. Now at 11, Portland's leaders react to a weekend of, at times, violent and destructive demonstrations. People tore down statues, fired bullets into a restaurant, and smashed windows and lit fires inside the Oregon Historical Society. Thank you for joining us. I'm Laurel Porter. As a result of all this, pressure is growing to get things under control. And the president is once again weighing in. Here's Maggie Vespa. A crowd gathered around a crane in downtown Portland today, waiting to see if crews will lift another toppled statue, this one of Theodore Roosevelt. Down the street, crowds also tore down one of Abraham Lincoln. Museum directors say people threw flares inside. Thankfully, they burned themselves out. But the carpeting is scorched. The crowd also stole a quilt from the lobby made by black women for the bicentennial. It's back, wet, bleeding, and torn. That the people who did this don't understand how we have worked to tell the true story of Oregon, the good, the bad, and the ugly. A fire, two rounds, uh, one through this window, one through this window. Blocks away, the owner of Heroes American Cafe says bullets, and he thinks a baseball bat, came through his window. John Jackson is himself a veteran. His restaurant pays tribute to first responders, and he thinks protesters, angry at police, took notice. Whoever they were, they were, they were definitely agitators because um, their peaceful protests would not have taken uh, the turn that we've taken last night. There's, there's no reason to damage property. The damage and the chaos Sunday night blasted by local officials this morning, including State Representative Tana Sanchez. We as Indigenous people stand with the Black Lives Matter movement, and that's what this moment is about. The fact that someone would hijack Indigenous People's Day to cause more violence is not appropriate. Here's Portland's yeah. mayor, Ted Wheeler. I know that last night, after people engaged in their acts of criminal destruction and violence, they were bragging about it on social media. They are not engaged in any activity that has any relationship whatsoever to racial justice or equity. They are purely engaged in violence and criminal destruction for the sake of violence and criminal destruction. The chief of police said a total of three people were arrested Sunday night. They're still investigating a lot of what happened. But that in and of itself is a topic of discussion on social media as well. Critics pointing out police arrested close to 30 people at a protest Saturday night. Police saying in a press release they moved in preemptively because they'd gotten tips things were going to get violent. Now, there was another demonstration on Sunday of, quote, militia members, a.k.a. armed men marching through Portland with semi-automatic rifles and, according to videos on social media, confronting people in downtown. Police in that case didn't arrest anyone. Now, the chief said that Portland police handled each demonstration as they did based on a number of factors, including safety and available resources. The mayor now is calling on everyone in the community to denounce violence. Meanwhile, cleanup continues today. Museum directors say repairs will cost upwards of $25,000. That said, there are a few bright spots. Restoration has started on that quilt, and staff are hopeful. There was also this note left by a homeless man named Oscar. He wrote he had seen the damage and donated what he could to help. Maggie Vespa, KGW News. We've also directed the FBI to immediately investigate the destruction of the Teddy Roosevelt and Abraham Lincoln statues in Portland and to prosecute the offenders to the fullest extent of federal law. President Trump at a rally in Florida tonight calling on the FBI to get involved in the investigation. We looked into those who've been arrested so far for last night's damage. A viewer wrote and asked us where they're from. 
We found out two of them are Portland residents. The third, Brandon Bartels, is from Pasco, Washington. He's accused of driving a van that police say was chained up to the Roosevelt statue and used to pull it down. We found out Bartels was also arrested at a protest in Kenosha, Wisconsin in late August. There, he was accused of violating the curfew set in place after protests erupted following the police shooting of Jacob Blake. New tonight, people in Clark County say they are tired of thieves stealing their political signs. One family caught a crook on camera just tonight. Others say someone did more than take their signs. Catherine Cook reports. Late Monday night, surveillance video from this home in Orchards shows a guy trespassing, then stealing a Joe Biden Kamala Harris political sign from their yard. The owners say it's the second time it's happened to them in less than a week. Right here, right here. In East Vancouver, there's an empty spot on Gertrude Stevens' front lawn. I had a sign and it was taken and it upset me very much. Her sign also supported Biden and Harris. Have never been a political person. So this is new for me this year. She put it out last month. And I felt so good because I had my sign and I'd look every morning. It was out, yes, you know. Then early Sunday morning, while Gertrude was out walking, it disappeared. There were five of us right here. All of our signs were taken the same day. Gertrude lives in Fairway Village, a retirement community. She reported the theft to police, then called her neighbor, Sue. I said, guess what? So her sign was gone, that sign was gone. So I was just surprised, but I guess that's the climate these days. Besides losing her sign, Sue and other neighbors found this note on their doors. It was a two page rant and I was really upset that because it starts out with as your fellow neighbor. The author writes, I am truly fascinated that you are choosing a candidate that will probably die very soon. They then criticize Biden and Harris till the end. It's unclear if the person who left the notes also stole the signs. I was disappointed and upset. I felt a little harassed. These neighbors bought new signs, 20 bucks a pop, from the Clark County Democrats. Chair John Oberg estimates 50 to 75 people have come by over the last month needing replacement signs after theirs were stolen. Oberg suggested, let's do what we learned in kindergarten and leave everybody's signs alone. As for Clark County Republicans, co-office manager Anna Miller says they've been dealing with their own sign theft issues. She estimates two to three people a day come by for replacement signs. That's roughly the same number as Democrats. Miller called sign stealing a violation of a person's private property and free speech, no matter who they're voting for. It's disparaging for all of us, she said. No one should touch the signs. It's respect. I respect that you have the right to your opinion, and I would never do that to someone. I wish that these things uh, weren't happening. Gertrude's new sign is in her window. She doesn't want to lose another one. But no one here is backing down. I don't believe in giving in to bullies. It's worth noting, stealing a political sign is a misdemeanor in Washington. Also, Washington voters should have their ballots very soon. The Secretary of State's office says they're going out in the mail this week. Catherine Cook, KGW News. And a reminder, voter registration deadlines are coming up fast. In Oregon, it's tomorrow, October 13th. In Washington, you do have a little more time. The deadline there is October 26th. You can register online in both states. You can also check your registration status and update your mailing address if you've recently moved. And before you mark your ballot, check out our voters guide on KGW.com. We have information about all the candidates and the measures for you right there. Today, the Senate Judiciary Committee started hearings for the Supreme Court nomination of Judge Amy Coney Barrett. She made her case today, saying she plans to stick to the words of the Constitution. I have been nominated to fill Justice Ginsburg's seat but no one will ever take her place. But courts are not designed to solve every problem or right every wrong in our public life. Democrats are focused on health care and how six conservative justices might rule on the upcoming challenge to the Affordable Care Act. Republicans, meanwhile, are keying in on religion. Barrett is a devout Catholic. They are attacking you as a mom and a woman of faith because they cannot attack your qualifications. By replacing Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg with someone who will undo her legacy, 
President Trump is attempting to roll back Americans' rights for decades to come. Republicans believe they have the votes to confirm Barrett before Election Day. Democrats are hoping to pressure Judge Barrett to recuse herself from any cases involving President Trump. We have a breaking traffic alert tonight. A deadly crash has all northbound lanes of I-5 closed between Southwest Nyberg and Southwest Lower Boones Ferry Road. This is near Tualatin tonight. Fire crews tell us a semi truck hit and killed a pedestrian. Oregon State Police are now on the scene investigating. They say to expect the closure to last several hours, so avoid the area if you can. Developing tonight, a tragedy in Beaverton. A four-year-old boy has died after a truck hit him in a parking lot. Police say he was playing in the lot this afternoon at the Hunter's Run Apartments Complex. The truck that hit him belongs to Portland General Electric. Police say the driver stayed on the scene and is cooperating with the investigation. New tonight, Johnson & Johnson just announced it has paused clinical trials for a COVID-19 vaccine after one of the participants developed an unexplained illness. It's unclear whether the participant was in the placebo control group or received the experimental vaccine. Another vaccine maker, AstraZeneca, also started its phase three vaccine trial last month, but was paused in the U.S. after a participant in the United Kingdom was reported to have developed a spinal cord injury. Experts say pauses like these are not entirely unexpected and are evidence of rigorous safety protocols in vaccine development. A bit of positive news in the pandemic. Today, Oregon reported a slight drop in cases. There are 222 new cases and no new deaths today. This comes after 337 new cases yesterday and three straight days of 400 plus new cases before that. The dotted line you see here on the graph shows the two week average. Multnomah and Washington counties recorded the most new cases with 44 and 40 respectively today. Governor Brown also put Umatilla County on the watch list last week. So what if you're one of those positive cases? How should the isolation process for the virus work? We checked in with our local health departments to get an answer today. They say if you have symptoms, you need to meet three requirements before coming in contact with others. No fever for 24 hours without using medicine. Other symptoms have to improve, and it has to have been at least 10 days since you first felt symptoms. If you test positive but have no symptoms, you should wait 10 days from your test to be around others. That's the piece that then it's really on you to continue to work with us together is to stay home and not get other people sick. It's also important to know if you find out you've been exposed to someone with COVID-19 that you should quarantine right away and stay isolated for 14 days. And you should wait at least a few days to get tested yourself to allow the virus to develop enough to test positive.